Mutaka mwindi mono no. Hello everyone. My name is Leticia Khadija Akins, MNT of Ignite Empower Youth Empowerment Initiative. You are welcome to our end of year um, session and get together as well. I would like to invite Miss Helen to give us an opening prayer for this auspicious event. Let's welcome her with a round of applause, please. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, let's close our eyes for a short word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you because you have kept our lives safe from the beginning of this initiative up till now. We are grateful to you that you have helped us improve ourselves. Even as we round this up this morning, we pray that you come into our midst and help us. Lord, make sure that everything that we do here will be a success. We pray that our lives will be better from this meeting. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Um, so right to it, we want to make some introductions. Of course, we made open for new mentees to jo join us. Vard Kesi of our mommy. And we want to know you, your name, where you're from, your institution or organization. So starting from my left, with the lady here, kindly pass the mic. Who introduce yourself, please. Thank you. My name is Vanessa Benin, a student of University of Ghana, Legon, studying education and information studies. Currently, the general secretary for Jubilee Ish. My name is Helen Jabeng. Um, I'm a graduate of University of Ghana School of Nursing, and I was the general secretary, former general secretary of the association. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. It's nice to be here this morning. My name is Emanuela Togbivi, a recently graduated student from the University of Ghana, and I'm a national service person. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Eugenia Fafabaku from UP College of Education. I'm the TAG Voter Vice President. Good morning. My name is Elwin Amjameshi, a student of Badu University College, studying pharmacy. Thank you. I'm Karina Oyokwati, a student of Accra College of Education, studying home economics and visual arts. My name is Betha Kalena Amhamenu, a graduate from the University of Cape Coast. I studied biochemistry, currently doing my national service. My name is Vivian Ayama, a student of KNUSD, studying PhD in Human Nutrition and Dietetics, and currently the Vice President of the Graduate Student Association. Good morning, everyone. Please, my name is Amida to Abdul Wahab. I'm a graduate from the University for Development Studies, Nyampala Campus, and I was the SRC Nooks Women's Commissioner, currently doing my national service at the Food and Drugs Authority. Thank you. Sandra Planch is my name. I'm a student of GIMPA, studying public administration. Good morning, everyone. My name is Constance Dode. We are students of University of Ghana, currently studying business administration. My name is Gloria Buafu. I'm an environment and social specialist, and I'm currently working on the Kumasi Central Market Project Phase 2. Hello everyone, my name is Roxanne Kui. I am a mental health advocate and I am the executive administrator for 40 Lives Foundation, which is a mental health foundation. Thank you. Hi, good morning. My name is Etonam Awak Laga. I'm a sport leader at Decathlon Ghana. Thank you. I go by the name Sarah Sam Ankara. I'm a student of the University of Ghana and I'm a committee member for the English Association, Ligon. Good morning. I respond to the name Fanu Loretta. I'm a student of the University of Ghana, Ligon, offering English and psychology. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Nicole Senasoa. Um, I'm a staff Nico nurse at Sam J Hospital. Yes. 
morning everyone my name is Mariama Ibrahim student of the University of Energy and Natural Resources studying BSc computer science my name is Jim Linda Nanikoa I'm a student of the University of Cape Coast and I'm studying Bachelor of Commerce in Procurement and Supply Chain Management thank you my name is Erika Mawenagbedi, a graduate of the University of Cape Coast, and I studied hospitality management. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Farida Barak. I'm a co-founder of Dukash Ghana. We deal in money counting machines and the founder of Farida Barak Foundation. Thank you. My name is Lydia Isiam Nyaku. I'm a student of UCC and currently studying arts in education. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Belinda Avongre, a student of the University of Professional Studies, Accra, studying accounting and finance. And I was the former president of Dissectors Club, UPSA. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My name is Frances Gifty Enin, a former SRC president of CAF University College in a class prepared for Ignite. Good morning. My name is Ekins Leticia Kadija, former Women's Commissioner for the Ghana Institute of Journalism, Assistant Class Prefect, please. <laughs> Good morning. My name is Mami Fua. I'm an actor and Obi sister. Okay. Uh, again, my name is Nicole Tenasoa. <laughs> I'm a staff nurse at Samji Hospital. Yes. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Fauzi Azela Seidu from the Simon John Dom <laughs> University of Business and Integrated Development Studies, then UDS WA Campus, studying the um, Bachelor of Arts Development Communication. Good morning, everyone. My name is Monica Jesse, a graduate from the University of Ghana. I'm currently a National Service Person at the Ministry of Finance. Good morning. <coughs> Good morning, everyone. My name is Matilda Hassan, a student of Third Credit Technical University studying information technology. Good morning, everyone. I'm Cynthia Agboja, a student of St. Francis College of Education, Hawaii. I'm studying uh, English and Ghanaian language. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Dr. Sousu, a student from University of Education, Winneba. I'm reading communication and media studies. Good morning, everyone. I'm Ama Anochua Anoche. I'm currently a national service personnel at GSZ Ghana. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dorothy Safwa. I'm a student at the University of Ghana, studying economics. Thank you. Good morning. I'm Elizabeth Naduli, a PR student of GIJ and a former deputy secretary for the WOCOM of GIJSRC. Hello, everyone. Good morning. My name is Nana Maposumpe. I'm currently a student at the University of Ghana, studying education and information studies. Good morning. My name is Naki Ajrako former secretary to the GIJ SRC UCOM, and also currently doing my national service as a teaching assistant at the Ghana Institute of Journalism. Thank you. And it's been so nice meeting you all. Um, now to the best part. <laughs> I like to do this a lot. I want to introduce or call on our mentor and our only mom with the standing ovation, shall we? Have our mom address us for this session. Madam Obobia Daku Opoku. You can do more, please. <laughs> Good morning, and thank you very much okay. for joining us this morning. Please take your seat. It's good to see all of you this morning. And uh, first of all, let me wish all of you a Merry Christmas. 
and a fruitful new year coming up. It's good to see all of you in red and uh, it gives me the feel that we are celebrating Christmas and it's a beautiful, quiet Christmas for all of us. It hasn't been an easy year, but whatever it is, the Lord has brought us to this level. So what we can do is to say thank you to our maker and thank you all for also believing in me and joining me as I mentor you ladies. I think that it's been a beautiful family. We started with just about uh, 10 of us, uh, 10 of us, and we've increased now on our page. We are about 96 to 100 people. And I think that we are growing. And I like the relationship between all of you. It, it looks like some of you joined and you've even made friends, family out of this um, group. And I am excited about it. Basically what we seek to do is to mentor you. So that at the end of the day, if there's any difficulty that you face, if there's anything that you are going through and you feel like giving up, throwing your hands up in despair, you should know that there's a family you belong to who are ready to listen and to be helpful to you. Not just that, what we do is that we make you understand that in life, sometimes it's better to keep going than to give up. And that's why we say that Ignite is different. And it's different because we take the opportunity to also read. Everybody knows that a leader is what he or she reads. And we don't simply say that, let's do our monthly gatherings and that's all. Those of you who are on the page know that every time we have a book that we are reading, every evening we come on, we discuss the chapter that has been read. We take the, what we learned out of it and then I realized that you guys also introduced something exciting. There's one of you or two who always come up with the words that they, <laughs> they got through that chapter. And I'm enjoying it. Sometimes I copy it myself and then I go through those words. So it's an innovation that I have enjoyed. And I want to say congratulations to those of you who take time to read and even bring up those words that ordinarily we would not have used or would not have seen in ordinary write-ups. So we are enjoying that one. Can we continue to do that? And apart from that, I see that even though we give a time limit for the discussions on the page, some of you post as late as 1 a.m., 2 a.m. And in the beginning, we thought we could streamline it, but I think that we'll just have to leave it like that because clearly some of you get back home before you put your thoughts together on the chapter and post it. So from today, we will allow you any time, but just make sure that it doesn't go into the next day so that it affects the next chapter. But so far, I think that I want to applaud all of you this morning. I think that it's been a very vibrant page. I think that I like the whole idea of especially the leaders. Immediately at 7 p.m., somebody says, hello, are you ready? And I think that if you want to grow up and be a good leader, keeping your time to and being principled and disciplined is very important. And I see that is something that is happening. So that even ordinarily, if it's Leticia who does it, so far as Leticia is not available, she's able to tell the next person that I won't be online at this time, so you take over. And I like the way that discussion has gone so far. There's no day that the discussion has delayed. Although maybe some of you post late, but at the end of the day, it starts and then it flows. So, a round of applause for all of you. And I want to congratulate you. What we want to do is that for those of you who are done with school, going through your national service, Sir George will be taking your names and stuff like that. So that when you are done with the national service and you will need help so far as working somewhere or 
one of those things is concerned, you can have a conversation with us and anywhere that we can put in a word, we can do a recommendation, we will do it because I know that a lot of, more of you are done with school now and looking for something to do. But because you are going through your national service, I'm just going to generate that list from January so that as soon as you are done, we can help you to get somewhere to work. What I want to see is to see my mentees flourish. And I just every, want everybody to see one of you and know that this is where you're coming from. You have been ignited. When you are ignited, you are different. And when you are different, you can move mountains. And that's what I always want you people to keep at the back of your minds that here we are different because I do not want a situation whereby you have issues, there's some difficulty you're going through and you think that is a border to us and you don't want to talk to us. Our doors are always opened. We have an office here. If I'm not here, Sir George is here, Frances is here. Frances is the class prophet for all of you. So if you haven't met her before, that's Frances. And Leticia is also here. All the old people, Ellen is here. Um, Nicole is also here and uh, Ella is also here. They are the ones we started with so automatically they become the leaders of this group. So please get to know them. If there's anything you can come directly to me, speak to them, it will get to me. We'll invite you into a meeting one of the days and then we all deal with it together. Always remember that family is not only about blood. But sometimes the help and the word that you get from some of us can even bring a situation, uh, like give you some respite so far as that situation is concerned. So please don't hesitate to get in touch with us. I might be busy, but so far as I know, one of you has an issue. We need to deal with it. We'll come together quickly and then deal with it. Francis is always fighting. Mom, you are not answering the calls. You are not answering the message. But eventually I do. At the end of the day, I am the one who have accepted to bring all of you on board. And as many times as possible, I will make time to deal with every situation that you have, you are going through. Please don't let your issues break you down. A problem shared is a problem solved. And that's what I want you to keep at the back of your minds today as we leave here. Is that it's our final book review for this year. And then we've decided to have a little get together after our review when we are done. I want all of you to get into that vibrant mood so that from January you take these uh, meetings very, very seriously. Because in January we're going to introduce a lot more programs and stuff like that, trainings and stuff that will help you to build yourself up as you begin to face the world, starting to work and starting to encounter a lot more people. The issues you go through at your workplaces can sometimes break you down. The issues you even have in your family sometimes can sometimes break you down as well. Most of you have issues at home that ordinarily you cannot discuss with the next person. But whatever it is, you should remember that those ones should not break you down. What it should do is to make you stronger. It builds you up so that when you step out there and you face similar situations, you know that that one is even small because what you have at home is bigger, but you've been able to walk over it. Let your problems not create stumbling blocks for you. Let it be speed ramps so that when you go over them, it becomes smooth at the end of the road. I just encourage all of you, none of us here has had an easy life. We all have a story. We all have something to talk about when it comes to growing up. If we had given up, we wouldn't have been here for other people to look up to us. 
what I want us to do is that eventually when you are done, you will be able to also gather people in your communities so that you can put them together like I have done for you. So you move out and you know you've gotten enough training here so you can also start your own small gatherings around your communities and you will know how to go about it because of what we have been able to achieve here together. I wouldn't have been able to put this together if you ladies have not, would, have not joined me. Because you joined, that's why we have a solid brand and we have a solid team. And I'm very grateful to all of you. Once again, Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas, Mommy. Um, this note, I want us to respond to the three words, I mean the three powerful words of Ignite, engage, empower, embolden. If I say Ignite, may I hear you say engage, empower, embolden? Ignite. Engage, empower, embolden. Ignite. Engage, empower, embolden. Last one, Ignite. Engage, empower, embolden. All right, so we are moving next to the book review session. And this month has been very exciting because we're reading one of the best-selling books by uh, Michelle Obama. And I hope all of us read it and we got into the book and we have applied it to our lives. So we are going to... Um, call on Madame Helen to take us through the review session like we do it on our platforms. Madame Helen, thank you. Thank you again for the opportunity and thank you all for coming. Um, a Merry Christmas to all of you. Um, we hope that you enjoy the coming new year. So um, as we've been doing, today we'll be um, having a book review the book title Becoming by Michelle Obama, one of the very resilient women I know. She's, she's a strong woman. I mean, she has done a lot of things that an ordinary person with an ordinary mindset wouldn't be able to conquer. And so she, she's a heroine. I mean, she deserves to be applauded. Um, as we all have gone through the book, we've read chapter by chapter. I'm sure we have taken some very important um, advices and some very important life lessons from the book. And so as the microphone goes by and it gets to you, please tell us what you have learned from the book. Some of the very important life lessons and values that you have taken from this very resilient woman. So we'll start with our very own class prophets. Miss Frances. Good morning once again. You're all looking so lovely. When I came in, I saw the beautiful shirt. I was like, wow, mommy is doing extremely well. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so what I took from becoming, hmm, becoming, I'll say, is a book that speaks of never giving up. For me, I took something basic from the entire chapter. Initially, when I saw the book, I was expecting something different. But then when I realized that the importance of people's story can tell you how to go about yours, it just became another thing for me. And my three major take from becoming is your environment determines most of your character. We are product of our environment. The second I took from it is who you choose in your life as a partner really does matter. And the third I took away from it is enjoy every process, whether difficult, hard, sweet, unsweet. Enjoy the process. Because one day you make reference to it as a story. And you never know who it will inspire. And when I say your environment, you are a product of your environment. From the book, we realized that every part of her growing up, she was involved with family. Her family was playing a major role. And that is so relatable to life. Because some of us, one way or the other, may not have our family in our lives like others do. But yet still, we are striving to make the importance or make our lives relevant. And regardless of how hard it has been, we are still climbing the ladder. And when I speak about partner, 
you realize that Michelle was not just focused on getting any partner at all, or just going after anyone at all, but a person who aligned with her vision. It wasn't just about love. For us now, we the this scholars 21st century Indomie generation. <laughs> For us, people think we think that love is everything. But from the book, it made me realize that love is actually not everything. People have been saying it, we've heard it, but sometimes it takes a different level of encounter for you to realize what someone is saying or how deep that thing can sink into you to move forward. That you need someone who is in need so well, and something that goes so well with your line of vision. It's not just about the love, the fantasies of, oh, that's my husband, or that's my... It's not about that. It's not about the whole concept or the cliche of marriage. But who you are with is the person making you to become what you want to become. Is your vision with the person the same as your drive? Is it the same as what the person have, or is it different? Those are the characteristics we look out for. And up to date, Barack is always and will always be one of the most happiest men on earth. Because every time you see how well Michelle is standing by him and how lovely they are, in fact, they don't even take their relationship like how we <laughs> so see it. They are always so happy and making it normal each and every day. So the importance of picking the right or choosing the right partner for life was one thing that really struck me. And like I said, enjoy the process. You realize if she hadn't really enjoyed the entire process, writing down her story with so much joy and excitement and motivation would have been really difficult. But she enjoyed every bit of the process and she was never alone. And I'm happy for the fact that we have a family here. For some people, they may not really see it as a family because, oh, mommy said problem solves a problem share, but someone will take my problem and go and work that kind of thing. But I'm so happy for the fact that she made mention of the fact that family is not necessarily blood. And this is the family we have built. For what you know, I've gone to places throughout the year to UCC. And in fact, I was struggling and I got George to help myself and some colleagues, Kafri, um, Linda, and co. They were available. And I was like, if Ignite hadn't brought me to meet these people, I mean, how was I going to survive on campus? That at night, 11, George would call me, Francis, where are you? And I've gotten food to bring for you. <laughs> you can imagine how it's like. And sometimes I'll be very scared to use the road. He'll ask me, where are you? I'll come and pick you up. That's family. In the little things we, we, that we see around, we should really learn to appreciate it because it's really worth a lot. So, enjoying the process and getting people around you to move with you in your direction is the best. And for 2023, for me, it is Ignite all the way. Because this is the family I need and I'm not breaking out of it. So I think my whole review and summary on the book revolved around that three. Thank you. Thank you. And then when it comes to partners, the little, thing, the little I can add and I want to add some of you rush. It's always good to take your time. It doesn't matter if your classmates are getting married, they are getting into serious relationships. If your time is not right, it is not the right time. Some of you, out of frustration from even your parents, your mother, and all that gets to you, so it makes you rush into things that, relationships that ordinarily, if you had taken your time and thought about it, you wouldn't get into it. So I'm just telling you that no matter the pressure that you face, take your time till you meet the right person. Anybody who comes to push you and ask you, where's your boyfriend, where's your husband, tell them, it is not for sale on the shelves at the supermarkets that you can just walk in and purchase. It is the Lord who gives husbands. Allah, when he's ready and that person comes into your life, you will know that this 
is the person. Don't let anybody, and I mean anybody, including mommies, daddies, family, mentors, whoever it is, rush you into relationships that leads to marriage. Your marriage can make or unmake you. And never forget that when it comes to choosing a lifetime partner. Thank you. Okay, that's a very powerful I mean, statement from our mom. Um, for me, the whole Becoming book by Michelle Obama, the few things that I picked and applying it to what we are experiencing with Madame Obobiada Kopoku. So at some part, she says that for all the doors that have been opened for me, and I have tried to also open it for others to pass through, and putting aside the biases, the stereotypes, and all that. And you learn that from her environment, because she's a black, and then, you know, that kind of racism stuff and all that she had to deal with and becoming um, first lady of United States of America. And she's still pushing through to help others, you know, putting aside all those stereotypes, biases and all that. I feel that this particular, I mean, family Ignite is one of those that mommy has opened the doors for us because she has passed through, people have opened doors for her, and she has also brought us together, and we shouldn't take it for granted. So Michelle Obama is just telling us to be resilient, take up opportunities when they come, make good use of it, put aside our differences. I'm sure that if, if we are going to work with, I mean, tribal stuff and all that, we wouldn't be here at, in the first place. So, I mean, it's all about the togetherness, living in harmony, and then bringing up the opportunities for others to follow. Talk to your friends, send out the word, and don't shut the doors when you have the opportunity to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I always say that it's always good to bring the people who you simply think do not like you or are not happy for you. Sometimes it's better to bring those people closer to you because when they are out there, they can destroy. And sometimes the people that we think are not our people are the ones who love us. The ones who are close to us are the ones who destroy us. So let's begin to just be sure of the people we push away. You understand me? It's very important. Hello, everyone. So Speak up. So um, what I picked up from the book Becoming, well, first of all, a parent's role in a child's life. Um, as a Ghanaian society, most of us didn't get the opportunity to have our lives with our parents. Me, in for instance, I stay with my grandparents, and they've taken care of me, trained me through it all. So then there was this part in the book where um, she was, Michelle Obama was in second grade, and she's a resilient child. She's someone, she's more like a go-getter. And her parents have always instilled that in her, that don't let anyone walk over you. Don't, like, stand up and talk for yourself. Be able to stand up for yourself wherever you are. And even, I think, her great grandmother, when she was teaching her um, piano lessons and all that, she was still like, no, no matter what you say, I'll still go for it because this is what I want to do. And her, her lights kind of dimmed in the second grade when she got a teacher and the teacher was downright cruel to the, the, the students and all that. But still, she went, you, you could see that if a parent is able to notice her children's mood swings and all that, you know that uh, there's something wrong with my child. And the mother, most of them, the parents would be like, oh, maybe the child did something, so... Let me not worry about it. Teachers are literally like the best second parents, so they will take care of my children. And most parents will just let it go. But she didn't. Her mother went to the school, spoke to the principal and all that. But I believe that if we didn't get that experience, please, when we give birth in the future, let's be able to 
have that kind of connection, that bond with our children, because you never know. It's a, a, it has a lot of influence in the childhood experiences. Right now, I wish I grew up with my parents, you see. <laughs> <laughs> so, but then, if I didn't get that, that doesn't mean my children shouldn't get that kind of experience as well. And also, being a female, a black female in a male-dominated society, it's very, very serious. Dealing with racism, excuse me to say, she said something, a quote that women endure entire lifetimes of abuse, oppression, cut calling, and whenever they see you, they want to touch you anyway, inappropriately. But yet still, it didn't deter her from going for what she wanted. She was motivated enough that I'm just from a middle class family. This is me. So why, why would I let all these cat calling these men just because women are supposed to be in the kitchen? So that means I'm supposed to be there. No, I'm different. They will say, oh, all women are supposed to be in the kitchen, minus me. <laughs> <laughs> you see, that's what Madame Obobia would say, that minus me. Take yourself out of it and go for it. If someone like this that went through all the trials and tribulations made and achieved so much more, what is stopping me? Let's put it at the back of our minds that, yes, people are less privileged, but minus me. Let me be able to go for it. Let me put it at the back of your mind. I'm determined, whatever it is. And our ladder holders. Very please important. Please remember, very, very important. Even if they step on your foot, say sorry. Because <laughs> they can push you up there. So that's basically what I learned. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Okay, for me, um, the whole book has been one of um, a very something I've, a book I've read that has touched me among all books I've read. And reading the chapter eight where Obama and Michelle met, one thing strikes me that was constant. When um, Obama and Michelle started going out, the first day he asked her, "Can I kiss you?" It's it's something that really touched me. You know, in our societies, um, boys are taught you can do whatever you want with a female body. It's like, I don't know if we all, we are all females. It's like, we are the properties of male. We are a tool for the male. So the male does whatever he wants with your body. But for the fact that he came out to say, can I kiss you? He was asking for her consent, her permission. It shows he was well brought up. And it's something we all need to do in the society. We need to start talking to the boys in the society. Women are not your tools. We are human beings just like you are. And then the second part is, um, reading the book, you, f you could feel the racism black people go through in the states. And I feel as leaders and as Africans, we have a duty to ourselves, to our continent. We have to develop ourselves and make the black race a proud one. And all these issues we are facing, I believe when we come together to work, we will, we will be able to solve them. And then becoming it's, it's not something that is infinite. It's not something that has an end. That just as she said, we, we evolve, we change. As we change, we evolve. And in every situation, we should always be prepared. Sometimes you're not ready for something, but it comes. So do you do? Do you have to treat her? You just have to manage. And you could see she was single. She went to being a mother, a president, a first lady, and she has to take through all the responsibilities. And for me, she's a very strong woman. Okay, so what I took from the book Becoming was... Up, up. Um, Speak up. Yeah. What I took was, um, in life, life is a journey, and then there are stages. No matter the stage you are, you have to not give up, no matter what you are going through. And then if you are in a, an institution, you are working, you have this particular job, and then you are not so happy about your job, it's never too late to start all over again. You have to be hard working no matter what you get what, no matter what you go through, if you are determined enough and passionate about your new found job or what you want to do, you would able you'll be able to make it. And I also learned that um when we are far away from our loved ones, the opportunity that we get, the next thing um, in, in, tap, in chapter 10, um, when Barr came back from summer, for the summer break, he, he went straight to 
moving in, moving into Michelle's um, house. And then I feel if you are far away from your loved ones and you get the opportunity to meet them, you should go. You should grab that opportunity because life is too short to be living alone and missing your loved ones. <laughs> And I also learned that um, as a parent, we should, we should be open-minded. We should have open communications with our children. Growing up, you don't get, okay, in our community, in our society, we don't get, some parents don't allow their children. They don't have certain um, discussions with their kids and all. They don't talk about sex, drugs, and all. So growing up, when I become a parent one day, I'll make sure to set my kids down and teach them all of these things. I don't want them to learn them from the internet or their friends or from school or anywhere. I will just sit them down and teach them what they need to know. So I'll be having opening communications with my children. Yes, so that's all. Thank you. Did anybody take notice of Michelle and her mother? The bond and the relationship between them is something that we can never take for granted. That was, a, that was a very beautiful relationship. And every step on the way, her mother was there. And it makes it easier, you understand me, so that you know that the moment you turn, it's not just anybody. It's your mom. So the bond between a mother and a daughter is so interesting in this book. And it teaches us about the relationships that as we grow up, we should be able to bring forth so far as giving birth and all that. And even your moms, it's not too late to bring them closer to you. That's if you have relationship with your mom. Even if you don't, if it's something that you can work on, please do. Because there's nothing like a mother's love behind you. And it's so evident in this book. Okay, so what I learned from the book is that in our successful life, sorry, in our successful life, we should learn to adapt to new changes. I miss learning to connect with the people around us. Also, we should project our lives out there. We shouldn't let people determine who we should be. We should learn to be ourselves, stay focused. Thank you. Okay, what I've learned is our choices in life. For example, our career choices we make. It can make us unhappy or happy. For example, Michelle Obama, her first choice, we could see that it got to a point when she has to change what she was doing earlier. So I would say that our choices in life shouldn't be on our friends. Maybe my friend is offering a BA education, so I should also go to that part. Meanwhile, what I want to do is life is different from what she is doing. Again, I also learned that in as much as we have our goals, we shouldn't think that maybe I'm from a poor home, so my parents cannot afford the money for me to go to maybe the school I want to go to or what I want to do in life. In as much as we are from poor or maybe middle class homes, we should try as much as possible. We should have visions and then we should have a big goal. We should dream big. Maybe one day, who knows, someone will come to our aid and then help us. Thank you. Okay, so reading the book Becoming is um, a top tier for me. When um, you are being challenged to, you are always thinking of how to become successful. Reading the book Becoming, I think it's a good one. What I learned is we are... All, um, we, we all are talking about relationship, but then we are centering it on our relationship with our children. I want us to consider our relationship with our family, our friends. Let's, let's get closer to our family. Let's get closer to our friends. Sometimes they are going through some things they can't share with us. But once you help them put a smile on their face, they'll become okay. And then one thing I've also learned is change is possible. 
no no matter the struggle no matter whatever you are going through change is possible put your mind to it and then be optimistic be focused don't let anything distract you and then at the end i believe that you achieve your goal thank you So what stood out for me most in the book was patience. And in everything we are undertaking, we should take our time to learn the basics. Because in chapter 4, when Michelle started taking piano lessons, she was eager to learn. So she started going ahead of her great aunt and learning, taking some of the lessons. But you have to take your time and learn from the master, know the basics. Because there might be a time you'll be called up to do something. And because you missed the basics, you were, such, you were in such a hurry to finish. You might not be able to do what you are supposed to do. And I also learned that our relationship with our parents is very important. For instance, my mom is like my best friend. Like it helps me in everything. So I'm not going to take bad advice from someone and put my life in jeopardy. So we should always invest in the relationship of our close ones. Thank you very much. Hello everyone. Okay, so what I learned from the book Becoming is Hello. Okay, so what I learned is that we should never give up in anything we are doing. You see, in the course of the book, at a point where she got married, she needed kids, you see, there were miscarriages and all, but then she never gave up. She went to the hospital, she went to specialist, and in the end, she was able to conceive. So my lesson is not to give up in anything we are doing. Thank you. Hello. So my take from becoming is that we should always learn to open up to people when we are facing challenges. Not just anybody. Yes. When you say people, it's not that the moment you meet somebody, you just go and then pour it all out. Not just anybody. And I want you to emphasize on that. Be careful about the people you have such discussions with. Yes, and we should also not allow just anyone in our circle because our associations go a long way in shaping and then breaking us. Because if you allow just anyone in your circle and then you open up to the person, you wouldn't know the advice the person will give you. Because you are in a difficult moment, you would think the person is giving you the right advice and then you end up not finding yourself on the right path. And then we should also be particular about the career paths we choose. We shouldn't choose career based on it being readily available or because it's paying. Because you find out that there are some teachers who take up jobs because that's what they find themselves doing. And then they end up frustrating the lives of children that come in their way. So we should be very particular about that. Thank you. Okay, so becoming for me has been a wonderful experience, wonderful 25 days and it has taught me a lot. One of the three top things it, it taught me was um, in chapter 11, she said, life is too short and not to be wasted. Life is too short is self-explanatory, but it means when you want to do something, you have a goal, don't procrastinate. Go for it because you might die, something might happen and you'd, you'd lose focus, you understand? And another thing I learned was compromise. She had to compromise a lot of times in her life because of her relationship with Barack. Imagine she just gave up because Barack was too popular. Well, the, um, the media was getting into her life too much. She gave up. She wouldn't be the Michelle Obama we all know today. So another thing is compromise. Also, I learned we should be able to take bad energy and process it into good energy. When she was being criticized as the first lady, the first black first lady of the United States of America, she didn't take it to heart. She took the criticisms in a good way and then processed it and made herself better. That's the top three things I learned from Karen. Thank you. And that's one of the things that I needed you to emphasize on. Some of you, criticisms kills you. It kills your spirit. That you wake up sometimes and you don't feel like stepping out there because of what the next person is going to say. You, you have been defeated if you get into that, if you let what people say get to you. So far as you have a plan for your life, 
you know this is the business you want to do this is where you want to work this is the family that you have you should not be ashamed of it don't be worried about what somebody says however whichever direction that you are headed just be focused on it and just move you pay too much attention to what the next person says even if it is watching that you can cook sell and get your money doesn't matter what somebody thinks even if you wake up in the morning and you have to put a table in front of your house to sell toffees and all that if it is how you will start your life please do it you worry too much about what the next person is going to say what my schoolmates are going to say what this doesn't matter if you have the support of this man up there what else do you need any step that you decide to take pray about it and move don't let anybody distract you some of you pay too much attention to distractions by the roadside if you do that you can never get to your destination when you pray about it and you're confident that is a step you wanted to take or you want to take please take that step okay so first of all i loved her writing reading becoming seemed and looked to me like i was having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with michelle and it was so inspiring so um i took something from the preface where she spoke about one person not having like a particular profession and there's i i i see myself in this light i feel like most of the times when we find ourselves in a particular jurisdiction we don't want to evolve we don't want to like explore and do other things but then even if you are a nurse or you are a doctor or whatever profession or whatever profession that you find yourself you can do so many things you can use your skills your talent to help people in your community you can use your resources, your time to um, volunteer, anything that you want to do. And also, I love the fact that she was very persistent and she had this uh, spirit of getting things right, like being perfect in all that she does. And also, uh, this book taught me to be very, uh, to, to dream big and also to persevere i i believe that with perseverance we'll get whatever that we want to and also we shouldn't listen to what people say about us i think as humans as we are most of the times whatever we hear about ourselves sometimes brings us down but then we should always have it in mind that we are we are we are not doing it for people to like us but we are doing it to help and also help someone who is out there watching you taking inspiration from you and also dreaming to be someone like you i really appreciate this book and thank you madam obobia Pukudako, for giving us this opportunity thank you thank you too thank okay uh, now it's here Francis, go this way first. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Hello. Yes, so, um... Hello. Okay. Okay, so, um... This book was very... Funny enough, I had this book and... <laughs> I didn't really finish it, so it was a good opportunity for me to start again. But this time around, as I was reading, I had to make notes because I knew that there was a purpose for us reading this book. Um, this book, um, most importantly, resonated with me in so many ways. I'll say this because, um, aside the fact that some people used to nickname me Michelle Obama, I felt like 
there's a lot for me to learn in this book. And one thing that stood out for me was the fact that she, Michelle actually did go to school for law, but she realized that at a point in time, she, she realized that the law wasn't really speaking to her or speaking to her soul like it should be. So I, I noticed or I learned that as individuals, we need to be in touch with what our soul is telling us. So if you are here on this earth to pursue a particular purpose, I think that you should listen to that purpose and always follow it. And so you realize that even though she had what, in, what every law student would be dreaming of, a job at a very high law firm, earning this amount of money, having literally a comfortable life, she rather pursued something else that she felt would satisfy her soul. And that led her to have a very um, compatible relationship with Barack Obama. And today we can all say that she's a former first lady of the United States. And so following what your soul is telling you to do can lead you to places that you've never dreamed of. And it can lead you to your soulmates. And bear in mind that it's not an easy journey. It's not supposed to be easy because it's your soul that's speaking to you. It's going to be a hard road. But most importantly, when you fulfill what your soul is telling you, that road is always rewarding. So thank you very much for this opportunity. Good morning. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Obovia, for giving me this platform to read more books. I like reading a lot. So me reading, be, um, becoming also added um, some kind of knowledge to what I already know, especially... Um, how to deal with uh, criticisms as you are growing up and you being a leader. I learned, I learned that no matter wherever you find yourself, there are going to be criticisms and there are going to be so many challenges. But you don't have to let those challenges weigh you down. You just have to see it as normal, as being part of your like growing up activities and then just move along with it. Thank you. Thank you all for those enlightening um, reviews from the book. I mean, I've picked a lot from all the discussions we've done so far. And at the ending part of the book, Michelle wrote something that I want to read. There's power in allowing yourself to be known and heard, in owning your unique story, in using your authentic voice, and there is grace in being willing to know and hear others. This, for me, is how to become. Your story is very important. Own it. It's your story. It doesn't matter how good, bad, or ugly it looks. It's your story, and that is what has made you become who you are. Um, you might never know, this is what will inspire somebody to do more. If Michelle didn't tell us a story, we wouldn't have learned all those important values that we know today. And so it is important that we own our story, and when we get the platform to share our stories, we share them. Because most importantly, someone else is looking at you. Someone else has seen what you've gone through and how far you have come, and is looking forward to hear that story, to pick values from. Now, I want to emphasize that before you mention your points, you mention your name once again before you continue. So let's continue with the book. My name is Vanessa Benin. Okay. So from the book Becoming, one chapter really caught me, which was chapter 10. And I had to write it down because I'm really shaky when I'm talking. <laughs> so, so it says that with Michelle... With Michelle, or like me, had a job, but here it is that I'm not yet done with school. Thinking of what the future holds, asking myself these questions, what will I be doing after school? Should I start my own business? And how will I even start it? In summary, it looks like I don't even know what I want to do. Having a heavy heart thinking about what the future holds for me. So with this chapter, it drew my mind back to our last meeting 
when I spoke about time and mommy also added her own and was like, time, just take your time. There's no time, there's no need to rush. And I'm sure that all the time when I'm thinking about it, my guardian angel is like, oh, for God's sake. <laughs> easy, <laughs> easy. <laughs> so I, my heart starts to beat. And I'm like, mommy is like, don't rush, take your time. Things will fall in place. And when it does, you look back at her and say that, mommy, I did it. So all I'm doing is that I'm going to take my time, pray about it most, most, most about it, and that at the end of the day, God is going to do it. Thank you. Good morning once again. My name is Emanuela Togbivi, and um, I, have, I have a lot of um, stories or a lot of lessons that I have learned from the book. First and foremost, one thing that really attracts me about Michelle Obama is the fact that she is a very ambitious woman. She has the fire that mommy has ignited and is still trying to ignite in us. Even as little as she could remember, she didn't know what she wanted to become, even when she was telling people she wanted to become um, a doctor and all that. Even though she didn't have her life planned or sorted out together. She just knew that she was going to be a great person because she saw herself being there and all her life she was so determined to become that person. And being a black woman in America, for the fact that you're even a woman in America in a male dominated society is something else. And her situation was even worse because she was black in addition to being a woman. So it's like she had two troubles to deal with growing up in America, being a middle class woman. She was so determined. Even at a point, I remember her counselor or someone told her that she was not a priest in material, but she didn't let any of those things put her down. She was not too, um, she was not someone to dismiss the opinions of other people like they didn't matter though. When she got that opinion, and she didn't agree with it. She went to other people, other people that she felt knew her personally, who could tell her whether she was actually on the right path of her life, people who knew her for being her, people she could trust that saw the potential inside her. She went to them for another advice, and they advised her on what to do. So I would advise all of us that you shouldn't just take the opinions of one person, probably even your mom or someone that is in a very high place that you trust, sometimes the opinions may just be wrong because nobody knows it all. So it's better to take a second opinion or even a third just to be sure of something. And um, I also read that um, at the time that she met um, Obama, Barack Obama and all that, she was more well-to-do than he was. So, you know, especially in the Ghanaian society, it's like you're not allowed to go out with someone that you are higher than and all that. But she saw what Obama was, what the world didn't know him to be at that point. She saw what Obama could become and made sure that she actually made, partly made that a reality for him. They built their lives together and she found a soulmate in that person. So sometimes a good thing may come to you, but sometimes good things come in disguise. So you don't just have to throw it away because it's not so glittering at that particular moment in life. So those are the, some of the lessons I have learned. Thank you. Good morning once again. So uh, reading Becoming, I don't know if we all realize that Michelle Obama was very obsessed with normalcy. She wanted to be normal, not just for her, but for her kids too. Though she was first lady, yes, she was first lady, blah, 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 she wanted to be normal. She would comply with all the laws and rules and regulations of the White House. But at some point in time, she would break the law in order, in order to feel normal, to let her kids live a normal life. I don't know if you all realize that. And so reading Becoming, I really love chapter 19 and chapter 20. It talked about when Michelle moved into the White House. You realize that many of them came to leave. The first ladies came and left. But she didn't want to fit in just as the first lady. She wanted to do something different. 
she didn't want to just be um, a normal first lady where you go to functions, a ceremonial wife. She wanted to do something to help her husband. So she started with a garden. And so sometimes you find yourself in situations. Don't just try to fit in. Try and do something different. That's why we are Ignite. We are different. Do something that is very different from what others are doing. And then also the preface of becoming. I realized that she mentioned um, that she had to take pictures with people who even insulted her, who even mocked her and they called her that she, she was a, a male. She had to smile, take pictures with them. Sometimes, yes, you meet people who criticize you, but smile. And it, it won't take anything away from you. Just smile, live a normal life. But in your head, you know, this person, what this person really did to me. <laughs> you have to smile. And then after the pictures... <laughs> some people can say really nasty things. And there are some things that the moment you hear, you feel like reacting immediately. May the Lord give you the strength. Amen. So that you can just take it in. Just... Uh, breathe in, <laughs> breathe out, and just take it easy. Because if you react immediately, the kind of scene you create, you are better off ignoring that person. So please, ask for such people we will come across every now and then. And some of them are terrible. The sort of things they can say. Can you imagine somebody looking at Michelle and saying that she looks like a man, she looks like this, that, that. But in all, she was the first lady. Where were you? All those guys doing those criticisms and saying all those nasty words. They could simply not be who she was. You understand me? So every now and then, just look at who is criticizing you. And know whether you have to respond or not. And I will advise you, most of the time, just ignore. Keep going. Because the going is what is getting all that feedback you understand me so if you keep going leave them to talk and by the time they realize you'll be high up there and they will still be down there looking at you so it's always good to sometimes ignore don't re it's not everything that you have to react to very important and michelle gives us a good example there and it's not that she didn't hear she heard she read she saw but she was very very calm about it and it's something that we should all make an effort to do. Hi. Okay, my name is Ewen Nam. And it looks like in the chapter 10, almost all of us are talking about Michelle's mother. But I want to say something about parents. Our parents, when growing up, they hide these emotions from us. They feel like we are still children. So and if there is something wrong with them, they find it difficult talking to us. And so I want to urge all of us that the moment you feel that sadness, you know, when you, look, when you listen to your parents carefully, they have this sadness in their voice when talking, especially when they are not feeling well. They have this sadness in their voice. If you don't pay attention to it critically, you wouldn't know. So we should all pay attention to our parents very well. You realize that in chapter 10, Michelle's father wasn't feeling well, and at that very day, he wanted to go to work. He still put on his jacket and everything, step outside. When Michelle Obama can feel the father say, my mom, my dad is not feeling well, but his dad, her dad wants to go to work. And then later on, he has been admitted and then depart from them. So I want all of us to pay attention to our parents. We shouldn't pay our attention to parent when is Mother's Day or Father's Day. Even though in Ghana here, we take Mother's Day more serious than Father's Day. So we should all take, pay attention to Mother's Day, not only Mother's Day, we should pay attention to them before even Mother's Day. For instance, some of us don't even post our Mother's, Mother's Day because we know what we are going through with them or we know what they are going through. So please, I'll urge all of us to pay attention to our dad as well, not only mommies. And then we are all talking about the opportunity that uh, Michelle Obama had from friends. Connecting with people is very, very important. The kind of people you relate with, how you relate with people. I've been on, excuse me to say, I've been on the, um, the NDC campaign background with mommy, even though she doesn't know me. Even the recent one, I had a picture with her, but she doesn't know. 
I would like to say that opportunity, opportunity, because by the grace of God, is opportunity that got me here. The person is here, but I don't even want to mention anybody because she doesn't want to be mentioned. <laughs> so opportunity, we shouldn't, in the book, when Michelle, the school that Michelle Obama attended, he had a friend over there, and the friend happened to be her senior colleague at the school. And so when he got to a point that she needed her attention or her advice, she walked towards it, and then she has opened her arm for her. So what I want to say is that connection or the kind of people that you talk to is very, very important. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. I'm Karina Uyokwati. And my hey. take is that your twin sister? <laughs> my take from becoming is about preparation. We are all talking about Michelle and parents and all that, but let's look at chapter nine. Michelle spoke about how Barack would spend nights reading, reading very late into the night, and then she made a statement that he hardly talked about cars or shoes. We are not saying that those things are not important. They are very, very important. You know, you have to look good. You have to ride in nice cars. But looking at where you want to go in life, you must prepare. You can be there and an opportunity will just bump into your face. Would you be prepared to pick up that opportunity? As growing up, I think that is what Ignite is doing. And mommy, Madam Obobia Kopoku, God richly bless you for giving us that opportunity to prepare us for whatever future positions or um, roles we are going to take up. I would urge all of us, even um, after reading whatever book will be given to us here, if it's a skill you want to take up, take on that skill. Make sure you learn it very well. If it's a short course you want to take, take it up and then learn it very well so that when an opportunity comes, you'll be very ready to pick it up and not only picking it up, but making a mark there for the fact that you are a woman and picking up a position. You must work twice as hard the man will do to put a mark there that a woman achieved this, a woman did this. Thank you. Hi, my name is Martina Najama Odoi, and um, like my sister said, it's through Miss Khadija that I also have this opportunity to be part of such, or to be on such a platform. And I'd like to thank Ms. Obubia Daku for such. What do you do? Such. You are late, so we didn't get your introduction. What do you do? Um, for now, I'm a student, but I do um, s some paid volunteering on the side, okay. but I am a student. Okay. Thank you. So um, I'd also say that I had this book as a birthday present earlier this year in January, but I've never actually opened it until this um, initiative. So I'd like to thank you for that as well. And I, would, I almost relate with a lot of, sorry, I'm quite emotional already, I'm sorry. No I almost relate with a lot of some of her experiences, especially with the sexism as um, a victim of defilement at 14 and sexual harassment at my place of work at 20. I know how this um, exploitation, that sexually sexism thing works, where unless your, man, um, your boss or the men around you don't find you attractive, then that is also a fault. I mean, I did not create myself. So that's, but sorry for us, that is the kind of society we find ourselves in. So this book has also touched on the fact that I cannot change who I am or where I come from, but I can change who I want to be or where I want to go. And in Ghana, we have um, a lot of parenting styles. Maybe I'm fortunate or unfortunate to be part of a strict parenting home. So my mom, after I was devoured, became a different person. Before I was devoured, she was very busy. She was here and there. And maybe she thought because, you know, authoritative and all of that, you are fine. But after everything happened, she became my best friend. She told me three things to date. I have lost hair, so may she rest in perfect peace. But she told me three things to date. She told me that, sorry, it has already happened. I cannot change that. 
So now I should sit down and decide who I want to be remembered for. And secondly, most of my friends continued to um, university before me because um, after the development, I was pregnant and I had a baby. So I had to wait two years before I joined my, my mates in the tertiary institution. So she told me that even though someone started before you, someone had a head start before you, doesn't mean they are smarter than you. So you should also determine the kind of smart person you want to be. And the third thing she told me is that success is not only about the amount of money you end up making, but about the difference you make in people's lives. So since then I decided that I want to leave the world better than I met it, because it's a ripple effect. Every little thing we do today would have an effect on someone or some people tomorrow. So Michelle Obama has also resounded that for me, and I have decided to be a better woman. Thank you. Let me say that you are my hero for the year. <laughs> going through defilement, going through sexual harassment did not keep you in your room. You are able to step out. You are able to talk about it. God bless the memory of your mother. She was strong. She made you go through it. And I love what she told you. How do you want to be remembered? Do you want to be remembered for us? The lady who was defiled at 14 and sexual harassed at 20? Or you want to be remembered for being strong and being able to talk about it just for it to impact on the next person? You are my hero. And I pray that the Lord will continue to strengthen you for you to be able to talk about it, to be able to motivate other people that it is not the end of the world. Maybe it's the beginning. Because what it does is that it makes you see things differently. And thank you for not keeping it to yourself and not boxing yourself in a certain corner and thinking that when you come into society, you're different. When you come into society, and as a group as ours, you are our hero. And we celebrate you this morning. <laughs> For whatever it is, always remember that you have a family out here. And we will be with you every step on the way. If there's anything you want to talk about, let me replace your mother. <laughs> and let me say it as it is to you. But I want you to know that between you and I and the rest who have a story to impact on the next generation, let's step out there and tell our stories and let people know it doesn't matter what you go through. What matters is how you recover and how you impact on the next generation. God bless you. Okay. Hello. So my name is Klena, and for me, becoming, I've picked quite some important details. So I'll be talking about balance, excuses, preparation, and failure. For balance, we all realize that Michelle was able to balance her work life, family life, and being a first lady. It's not easy. She made time for her children make sure that she was there to listen to them, identify like they are very tiny needs. Even if it comes to food, what they should eat. Um, as a lady growing up, this is something we should learn because one day you'll be married and if you're a career woman, you're chasing your dreams, how will you balance it? Will you be able to give your children attention, pay attention to your husband and also pay attention to your job? We should learn how to balance these things. That's one thing Michelle did very well. And excuses. We as women, we are fighting for equality with men, but are we actually doing things that will make us equal? Because me like this, I'm an example. Um, like a lady like this, you're in your menses, you're having abdominal cramp, then you call your boss that, oh, I'm not feeling well, so I can't come to work today. A man will not make such an excuse. Every day, you have this to do, you have to do this, you are taking your child to the hospital. Excuses here and there. It's not ideal and it will not help you. That is why they always put men first, because you don't see men doing such excuses. Talking about failure, it is okay to fail. But then what is not okay, it's you staying there and not getting up. 
Michelle like had difficulties on the way, had issues, but then she didn't stop. She kept pushing. So if you fail maybe a course or something, or even if you are trying something and it's not working out, it's okay that that has happened to you, but don't stay there. Don't sit there. Get up, fight harder, try harder, and get out there. And the last thing I'll talk about is asking for help. Um, Michelle, even at some point, even though she was a first lady, a big woman, will go to counselors and be like, oh, this is happening between my husband and I, and I'm not okay about it. How do I go about it? You don't know everything. I don't know everything. Even our mommy doesn't know everything. So sometimes it's okay to take advice from people, ask for help. You have to ask the right people anyway, but then it's okay to ask for help. So don't lock yourself up and feel like you are all alone in the world. That's all I took from becoming. Thank you. So this morning, I had an argument with Frances. I asked her why she didn't wish me a Merry Christmas yesterday. Mommy, I was sad. I didn't even send a text message to anybody. It wasn't a good day on Christmas Day. Whatever it is that is eating you up, it's Christmas. And that's the example I want to give you. Don't let little things get into your way. Sometimes it's even stepping out there or even chatting with people. I'm not saying go and tell them your story, but just having a chat with them, sending a message or say, oh, where are you? Can we sit here for a drink or something? It gets you out of that situation. It's better than coiling yourself up in your room and you're tucking in your bed and just being there, being all sad and crying and all that. Sometimes a little conversation here and there also helps your situation. So what I'm trying to say is that it's not every time that you have to lock yourself up because you have a certain problem. Sometimes it's better to step out there and let yourself go so that you can deal with that situation. Very important. You understand me? Yes. Okay, Smile. so with me, the first lesson I learned from becoming this, how humble Michelle was. We know that uh, from the book, she was the most confident person, the most confident woman you can ever come across. She asked all the right questions from childhood and all that. But she was so humble that uh, from day one to the end of her reign and all that, she will always appreciate the people in her life. When you look at chapter 5, for instance, let's take how she appreciated her parents. She knew that even though her, it's her parents' responsibility to take care of her, and then even at a point that they couldn't afford what she wanted, she, she didn't blame them so much. She understood where she was. Let's take, for example, when they needed to go to Paris. She knew that her parents couldn't afford it. And even though it wasn't her problem to worry about it, but she was compassionate about it. Most of the times we feel so entitled. We feel that, oh, our guardian or the people who are taking care of us are supposed to do it. it it's your responsibility. And then when they do it, we don't even show appreciation. So we should take a lesson from that, that as we are at the age of 40, she understood her family uh, finances and what they could do and what they couldn't do. And then she actually understood that it's a process. When she gets there, she'll be able to afford all these things and all that. But for now, I don't want to burden them so much and all that. And then she was very appreciative from chapter one to the end, even her nannies, the people in her life and all that. So within our growth process, everybody in our life, we should learn to appreciate them, our friends, those people that we work with, those who mentor us and everything, our parents, our siblings and everyone. We should learn to appreciate them along our growth process. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lydia, and one of the lessons I got from becoming, sorry for my voice, one of the lessons I got from becoming is in order to achieve any goal, you must have a plan for it. And in planning for it, you must have an alternative plan also. That is a backup plan. Because if you plan and you don't have any alternative for it, you may end up not being able to achieve it. So if you have a backup plan, when the first one doesn't go out as you wanted it to be, then you go in for the second option. 
and also in chapter 12, I realized that Michelle chose Susan and Valerie as her mentor in order to guide her, combine her work and motherhood together. So I learned that in life, whatever situation you find yourself in, you must look out for someone who has gone through the same situation and has been able to come out of it and then set them as your mentors. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Belinda Vongre. I want to thank Madame Obubi Opokudako for giving me this opportunity to always read a chapter of a book because I bought a, a chapter a day. A chapter a day. <laughs> thank you for the correction. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> I bought a book, How to Become the 360 Leader, last two months. I've only read four chapters. I've not opened the book again. But if this book, if you don't open a chapter a day, Sir George will call you, why didn't you submit? <laughs> so you'd have to read it. Okay, I took three things from Becoming. And one thing I want to talk about is control. In life, you can't control everything. So we shouldn't be sad. We shouldn't be depressed. shouldn't be exasperating or angry that you can't control things when they are not in your league. So you should always fix what is fixable. And I also want to talk about being smart. You don't just have to be smart. You have to own your smartness. You are different from other people. Everyone is unique. And my friends always make fun of me that, well, you can't sing, you can't sing, but I'm in the choir. So, <laughs> yes. And also, you have to know that you must be very important for people to talk about you. If you are not important, someone will not be talking about you. So you should be happy that someone is talking about you behind your back and they can't say it in front of you. These are some of the lessons I took from the book. Thank you. Good morning. Please, I'm Rita Isiedu. Um I've learned some few things from the book, though I couldn't read everything. Sir George was always on me to read. I'll contact Mamaga. Mamaga, please, when you read it, summarize everything for me because of my work. I'm not able to read. But with whatever that we've been talking about or we've been discussing, I've realized that you don't have to give up in life no matter what, no matter the situation. Though I have never given up in life, but I'll still use that thing to encourage myself that no matter the situation or anything, I don't have to give up. And also, I don't have to take negative things at heart. There are things that we hear about us and you'll be like, wow, is this about me? We shouldn't let those things um, bring our spirit down. We should keep on doing whatever that we've decided or we've said to ourselves that we'll do. I think the last time we came here, Mommy was talking about what she has been through and everything. And it's really encouraging me. Like, you will help people, and yes, still, they'll go behind you, say things that you weren't expecting them to be doing. And I would say, don't take negative things at heart. Thank you. OK. I'm Mamaga. <laughs> yeah, original Mamaga. Mm -hmm. So I also took three things from becoming. The first one is, you see, regardless of what we go through in this life, you should never give up. Oh, what Michelle was going through, she never gave up, and she was focused. That's the first one I learned. Then the second one, we should ignore people who tell you that you can't make it in life. Ignore them. It's not their business. It's you, your business. And the third one is, don't be afraid of trying new things at your workplace. It's a, your new environment. Try to adjust and adapt to the system. You see, Michelle, when Michelle went to the White House, it was so interesting. She met a lot of people, but she managed to adjust and adapt to the people. So wherever you may be, try to adjust 
and stop complaining too much that oh and I, I'm not making it I'm not seeing top we should we should just put a stop to it thank you Good morning once again. I'm Farida Barak. Um, Barack Obama is your brother. <laughs> um, I would like to once again say a very big thank you to Mommy Obobia for this opportunity. One thing I would like all of us to learn is the fact that we have to take advantage of every opportunity. Why am I saying this? I'm a member of um, Mami's constituency, and I have been wanting to know her, to see her. I look up to her, actually. And I'm like, how will you get to meet such a high-profile person? You can't just wake up and walk into her house. She, has, she actually has a foundation office at Malam. I went there a couple of times, and I met her absence. I'm like, how, how is this possible? Do I just give up and forget? So, it's there. And then I hear um, former president having a watch party for the just ended World Cup. And I'm like, I know mommy is a staunch member of this party, so who or who she will be there? <laughs> Farida, what will you be doing in the house on this day? Put everything on hold and grab this opportunity. So, I took advantage and then I drove there to the location. After everything, I was nervous. I saw a guy walking and then I just approached him. I'm like, I want to talk to mommy. Do you think she would be nice? <laughs> and then he's like, she's the likable person you can ever meet. Just go to the car, talk to her. I'm like, hey. You know these people, when we see them behind our phones and on TV, how they are, you're like, are they superhumans? So, the guy just, he, he made a move actually, and then I followed. Mommy was in a conversation actually with another person. She just wind down her glass, and she was like, hello, Miss Ghana. <laughs> and I'm like, hi, Mommy. And she's like, you're beautiful. And I'm like, Mommy so are you thank you so much and that was i didn't know where the tension and the the pressure and everything i didn't know where they went to and then i told her i've been wanting to see you blah 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 da, da, da. and then she was like oh i'm glad to have you let me just add you to ignite and to the glory of god i'm here <laughs> and i know with the help of god each one and each one of us every here has a goal we all want to achieve something and i know god through her will will be part of the the process and then we'll get to where we want to be so back to becoming <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of things i learned and then mommy in her talk made mention of a few and i would like to stress on the fact that we have to keep the people who bring out the best in us. We have to hold on tight to them. I'm a very confident person. I'm a talker. I read. I never thought of mastering that or making use of it. I just know, oh, Farida Pekasa, Farida Penkomo. My mother-in-law looks at me and she's like, who name so with my politician? Sana wanwa timo. I'm like, what is this woman seeing that I am not seeing? And then, in a conversation, her son will also be like, Are you your politics? I'm like, ah, people are seeing things I am not seeing. So I sit down, I look around me, and I begin to join the things I'm hearing and the things I know I have within me. And I'm like, no, God is speaking through these people to me. So let me take a step. That is one. Secondly, I also learned that we have to, life is a journey. We have to take every step at a time. In reading Becoming, we saw that Michelle took time to explain every step of her journey. That is because she paid attention to every step. She didn't rush through life. 
she took every step as they came and then um going to the latter part of the book there's something one person said the name i have here is glory and it has been with me from like the day i joined the group and she she said and i quote michelle was an ordinary lady who found herself in an extraordinary journey what she's trying to say is that michelle started like all of us she wasn't born with a silver spoon in her mouth she started life from the grassroots and then through her perseverance and her tenacity she got to where she wanted to be so we shouldn't always like coil ourselves and be like no because of um the resources or the opportunities surrounding me i can't get to where i want to be she was ordinary but look at her impacting the world at large so let us always see ourselves beyond the things around us let let nothing limit us in achieving the things we want to achieve and then the last thing i learned from the book becoming was the fact that we have to be there for people be it family be it friends whoever we have to actually be there for people just like mommy has availed herself to be there for us and other people we also don't always see that okay um me being friends with martina or me getting married to this guy what can he do for me no ask yourself what can i also do for the person we are not we are not in this life for just creation's sake some of us are actually the people that god will use to impact others looking at barack obama as a man he becoming everything he became was in a way part of michelle becoming part of his life michelle made an impact in his life so there's this quote i have with me every day from albert pike and it says what we have done for ourselves alone dies with us but what we have done for others and the world remains and is immortal so let's take this with us and it will help us so much thank you i'm sorry i forgot to add this i will give you a big hug after this program everything she said about defilement and um the sexual, sexual harassment, harassment is very relatable to me that is a story for another day but you have never been able to talk about it i haven't actually my, my husband is the only hero. person who knows about this because he was there with me through the journey and it's very traumatizing you need to experience it to feel it or to know about it i was i was a dead person for five years not wanting to go into crowds not wanting to work with people because i'm uncertain about what next i'm going to see or i'm going to face and may god help us all yeah. and you have been motivated today so begin to talk about it begin to impact on other lives you see why i say she's my hero for today she spoke it has impacted on you and you are speaking the same way that one day, wherever you get to, in a group of young ladies, wherever you find yourself, if you bring it up, somebody else will open up. So sometimes it takes one person to open up, to be of help to all of us. And that's why I know and I believe that if there's any remarkable moment in this meeting, is when she told her story very interesting story and we found a hero today no matter what the difficulty is no matter what you are fighting with in your heads may the lord give you the strength one day to talk about it it will lighten your burden okay my name is erica please speak up my name is erica and my take on becoming is um, we should never give up. Because me, I'll say this, um, I've been trying to write um, LSAT. 
and I started about two years. It's kind of difficult, but when I started, I thought maybe like we have this time schedule, so I'll prepare and write it. But as I got to know, you can write it at any time, like you want to. Um, I decided to like lay back and sometimes I go on break. But the thing too is with the LSAT, you need to keep practicing. If you like, maybe you study for one month and you stop and you don't practice, you forget. You need to practice and become perfect. And it got to a time I decided to rise, but I always get scared and thinking, oh, maybe the reading comprehension is difficult. It's not like um, the reading comprehension we do here in Ghana. It's it's a whole lot. So I've been giving up. I don't like sometimes because I know. Um, we have Zoom sessions, and I know today we'll be having reading comprehension. I sometimes don't join um, for the session because I get scared. I don't, like, I've not been able to. Sometimes you read the passages and you don't even understand what the passage is about. But, and I've, I kept on postponing because I get scared when the time is near for me to write. But this time I've decided when I read a book, I, I um, with Michelle Obama, she was able to like work hard. So I think maybe if I work hard and um, practice on the reading comprehension more, I'll be able to do it and I wouldn't be scared. So I've given myself to um, April to write it. And I know this time around, I'm not going to postpone or anything. And also with, her, um, with Michelle Obama, she didn't come from a wealthy family. But with the people around her and her family, they were able to support her. She had a happy childhood. Um, her mom taught her in her early childhood, so she, and she was able to go to school. She was able to do well. And also, she had challenges just like many of us, but she didn't let that pull her down. She was able to strive hard and work hard, and she was even able to um, go to Princeton with her brother. And she met people who became her mentors and friends, who made her feel at home. So I think with mommy too, she she, <laughs> she has brought us all here together to like help each other in times of need of or trouble. We can speak to one another and maybe we'll help, we'll find some help, be able to achieve whatever we need. And also, um, um with becoming. With the, in the last part, she made mention of um, um, she not being perfect or her country not being perfect, but she was able to like tell her story uniquely in her own way, and she was able to bring it out, and it has helped other people too, and that has made her become what she is, like as being the former pres um, first lady. So thank you. Thank you. And that exams will be written, right? Yes. And you have passed already. Hi, everyone. Um, once again, my name is Amida Tu. And from this book, I've learned so many things. There are a lot of examples in there that I encountered as a student leader. So I realized that we are not the only... As student leaders, we are not the only ones who go through the criticisms from our mm -hmm. friends. You come up, you want to take up a leadership role. You hear stories about yourself and you'll be wondering, is it me <laughs> or it's another person that is, they are talking of? But then in the book, we saw um, Michelle telling us that they said she was a male and a whole lot of things that people said about her. But that never stopped her. It never became a stumbling block for her to carry on, forge on, and become whoever she wants to be. And the other thing is that she, as the first lady, knew that she has a responsibility. And that's a problem for some of our leaders. If you are a leader, you are to serve and not to be served. Some people become leaders because of the beautiful moments, the crowd cheering them, the titles that people will call them when they are out there, but not specifically the role that they have to play as leaders. So I learned from this book that if 
you pick up a role or power is being given to you it's a clarion call on you to serve your people the other thing is dream big obama never looked at his color he has a kenyan background but he never said because of that he he wouldn't dream big I, imagine him saying he wants to i'm sure maybe when he was growing up he ever told a friend or somebody that this is what i want to become someday they, the person will even laugh and be like you your background how do you intend to even get there can you even cross to the next stage to become the the first black president of the united states of america but because he dreamt big and then after dreaming he didn't just sleep he worked towards it he persevered and then god came through for him and he became the president and also i realized michelle was she was and is still very confident growing up in chapter three her grandpa that's dandy he used to yell at her grandma i'm sure the grandmother was afraid of the grandpa in a way but she was the only one who could speak up to her grandpa and be like you don't have to yell at grandma so this tells us that we should speak up if you think somebody is doing something that is not right to a fellow once it is not right you should not in a very harsh manner but in a polite way you can approach the person and be like oh the way you are treating this person or that person isn't right if you do it this way or say it that way it is better thank you very much thank you let me wake up tomorrow morning and go and tell my friends that i'll be the next president of ghana can you imagine what they'll say <laughs> exactly Ghana is not ready for a female president. Ah, but you two, are you okay? Are you correct, Kra? They will even make calls and say that Obobia is not normal. You understand me? Then that's what um, uh, Barack Obama didn't do. He was sure of what his target was. And he aimed at it. He took the shot. And he scored. You understand me? So it's not about what people say and not what people say that you can't be. If you are determined, Pray about it and move, as I always say. You understand me? Even if you don't get to where you want to go, you will get somewhere. And you will make that point that at the end of the day, this is what I wanted. This is why I got. Sometimes you even get more than what you want. So please, just be determined, be focused, and keep your eye on the prize. That's the most important. I'm Salma. Good morning. Um, I have heard everything I wanted to say today here. <laughs> I guess I have to say it again. Um, reading Becoming, I realized that dreams do come true. Even if you are coming from the most unlikely places, somewhere that someone wouldn't even expect that someone like you could get where you want to, it could come true. But then again, you realize that the dreams don't just come to you. You have to plan, you have to work for them, you have to prepare yourself such that every step that you take, you know that you are the person that can take that step. You have the capabilities to do whatever it is you want to do. You have to persevere, you have to stay hopeful because, truth be told, even if you have all the capabilities and you are not hopeful, you do not believe in yourself, you can't, you can't take the next step, you can't make that difference that you want to make. So we must plan, we must prepare ourselves, and then we must be hopeful. And then one other thing too that I learned today is that it is always important to share your story. Even if it's a very small story, it's always important to share it. And then in sharing it too, you must own it and then stress on how exactly it is you got there. Every step that you took, how you overcame it, because you may never know who is next to you that has gone through that same thing or is now going through that same thing. That person may want tips on how to surpass such hurdles. So it's always important to share a story, speak about it everywhere you go, so that each and every one around you can impact from what it is you have learned and whatever it is you are going through. Thank you. Um, Sandra is my name, Sandra Planch. And I'm excited to be here. I remember when I used to worry Helen and Frances after we met at the Art of Speaking. And I'm so happy that finally I get to join this prestigious 
um, foundation or family, yes. Moving on, I remember when Barack Obama became president, I was reading my diploma in um, AUCC. It was AIJC then, now AUCC. And any time he spoke, or I used to listen to him, I used to listen to him on BBC. So anytime he spoke, I remember so well that I had goosebumps. I didn't know the exact thing that made me had those goosebumps. But fast forward, I realized that one, because it was black, and at the time, even now there's more education on racism, so it's quite better. But at a time when he was becoming a president, you, you can imagine the opposition that he, he, he faced. And so any time he spoke during their presidential debates, I had goosebumps all over me. I didn't really know what it was. But now I think it was because he, he broke boundaries. And so Michelle Obama, honestly, I was equally um, looking forward to reading something about her knowing that she was the first black um, first lady. And so knowing that she had this book, I really wanted to get closer to her. And the only way was by reading her book. The book has taught me a few things. And um, I've noted them down. I want to share them with you. It's OK to admit you need help. Some of my friends have already said that. At some point of my life, I felt I could do it all. I could do it all, knowing where I was coming from. I thought, oh, I had a strength, I had a courage. But everybody needs somebody. Even the president has council of elders. Even the president has council of elders whom he deliberates or seek advice from. So who am I? if I should go to anybody. And I used to limit myself very, very, very much. Back then, I wouldn't have come to you, Helen or Frances, because I thought, well, that is the highest I could go, just be in a gathering like this, and that's it. But finding out and reading, knowing more, exposing myself to a lot of things, asking for help, there is nothing wrong in asking for help. There's no handbook or manual in life. Ask for help when you need it. And instead of making it look like you have everything under control, rather focus on trying to get it under control. And trying to get it under control means you are seeking advice, you are seeking help from those who have been through it and who are it. The second point is play out all the possibilities when making a decision. And those possibilities include the negatives. As Christians or as whatever beliefs that we have, we tend to say, hey, God forbid, God forbid, I want to take up this opportunity, or I want to take up this role, but God forbid, what if this happens? No, God will not forbid. You, you have to think that yes, there are the eaves, there are the bats. Consider all of those. All of those make you who you are going to be or who you are or who will you who you will be. This is very important to me. Worrying about others, worrying about what others think about you. It only limits how far you can go. And that was me. In the local parlance, I would say, na asem ha me pa. I I took everything and I would go indoors, break down every word for word what anybody has, has said about me. And it worried me. But fast forward, do I even care? If that, that is what makes me happy. And the same thing with Michelle Obama. I read from a whole lot of people. I don't know if any of you know um, this woman. She has a popular um, television, Wendy Williams. I've heard her speak so much about Michelle Obama. But as she rightfully said, and as our mommy said, 
at the end of the day, I was taking pictures with all of you who said bad things about me. Now, who gets to laugh best? I do. And who is the first lady? I am. I am yes. yes. And my name has gone into the, the uh, history, history books. And so I do not think about whatever. I don't care what your opinions are. I, I listened to Nana by the other time, and she said the only criticism that she would take is constructive. If you are willing to offer me a certain help, a certain advice, as you are advising me, other than, oh, Frances, I don't think your hair is, is not, no. Maybe, okay, this looks better, but you would have looked more beautiful, more prettier in this. And that, is, that option is left with a person to choose from. If she goes in and thinks, okay, so let me go and get this hair and try it on. And of course, okay, so what this person said was actually true. Other than that, forget. <laughs> and um, someone having a hair start doesn't mean they are smarter than you. You are smart in your own way. That is what you should know. Um, some, um, I, w I would like to end were these two quotes I, I, I heard from talking to people. And that is what I have I've taken with me, trying to listen, associate myself with good habits. Of course, bad company corrupts um, good habits. I, I, there was an issue I was speaking to um, a church leader, my pastor, and he, he said, a leader who doesn't know how to postpone his or her anger to the right time is a fool and not fit to lead. I think our mommy made... Um, some, said something like that. You don't have to bust out or just re Not every action needs a reaction. As leaders, as we are being groomed to become, you don't need to, everything, no, I have to. And we see it on social media. Do you think you would want such people to, to mentor you? No. Someone he hears something and have to, because the, the internet is now available to everybody, he picks up the phone and then starts recording and throwing all kinds of words to, you know, so you have to be able to control yourself. And then the takeaway for me is believe in yourself, even, no, even when no one else believes in you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think from this time, we would have to limit, I mean, our submissions because we are far behind time. Thank you. My name is Constance. Thank you for this opportunity. Constance, I learned from louder. Yes, ma'am. I learned from becoming that in daring to be different, you have to be a peacemaker and then you have to compromise in certain situations. In order for peace to win, we live in a world where everyone wants to be heard. We all have opinions which we feel is right. But then in order to be different, you have to be a peacemaker. And peacemaker goes hand in hand with humility. So when you are humble and you are peaceful, you will be different. And that is how you would leave a mark. Thank you. My name is Gloria, Gloria Boafo. And I want to thank Madam Obobia for this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. I have been looking for searching for a reading club. And some of the clubs that I joined, they end up being a market, selling and all that. So finally, I'm glad I found what I want. So to be coming. Uh, Michelle Obama has been a mentor right from a distance. And reading her book really got me closer to her. There are so many points, so many take home that I took from the book. And till date, it's still a mystery to me how Barack Obama became the U.S. president. I can't still think far about, uh, about it. <laughs> Considering his background, you know, as an African, his, mother, his mother's background, and then growing up in U.S., and then all of a sudden managing, maneuvering his way onto that seat. It's unimaginable, but it happened. And he talks about having the right people in your life. When he decided, he took that decision to become a president, he said, you know, it wasn't clear, the road wasn't clear. He thought he was going to lose. But he was so thankful to the people who supported him, the people who believed in his dreams his friends, his families, his associates, and then some of the American citizens that came to him and said, we believe in your dream, we can do it, we can make it. 
And then that alone gave him the confidence that yes, he has to move forward and he's going to win this election. So in life, we have to surround ourselves with these kind of people. The people who can come to us and say, we can do it, we can be it, we can make it, we can achieve it, positivity. We shouldn't allow people to project their negativity on us. Most that's what we do. We listen to people, we allow people to project their failures, their disappointments, their negativity on us. And then indirectly, we buy into them. We should not allow anyone, that is one thing that I got from becoming. We shouldn't allow people, friends, family members to project any negative value on us. And let us be very, very, very conscious and identify negativity. People who have bad energies, they are all over the place. We eat with them, we fellowship with them, we, 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 we sleep with them. They are all over the place. Let us be conscious of ourselves, our lives, and identify bad energies and then rule them out. Rule them out. Rule them out. And always go for people who project positive things upon our life. And then one thing also I realized about Michelle Obama was that she was very conscious about herself. At every point in time, she was very conscious. This is what I want. This is what I want my life to be. This is what I want my job to be. This job is not satisfactory. I want this job. This is how I want my children to be raised. This is how I want the campaign. She was very, very conscious. At every point in time, she was very conscious. She had targets. She had principles. And she always worked you know, towards her targets by being disciplined. Sometimes we set principles for ourselves, but then we are not disciplined enough to follow them. But sometimes we are not faithful to ourselves. I will do this. I will do my own alarm, my own watch, my own I need to go here. I do on now. Oh, I need to read this book. Uh, we are reading this chapter today. You postpone. I do on yet. We won't do it. We need to be disciplined and follow the principle we set for ourselves. And that is what Barack Obama did. He was very principled and he was disciplined enough, together with the wife, followed each principle and then they reached their goal. And then the last thing is um, the relationship between Susan and um, Michelle. Michelle, we all know Michelle lost the friend, Susan. Yes, let us appreciate the people in our lives and let us also not try to force people to be what they are not. Let us appreciate everyone. We are all not equal. We are all different. So let us appreciate each each one's you know indifference. We are all unique in our way. Appreciate everyone's uniqueness. And I think it will go a long way to help us and also to groom them. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Roxanne. Thank you once again, Mami Obobia, for the opportunity given me. When I chalk my blessings for this year, 2022, I count you as one of them, and I'm grateful. <laughs> so, Becoming by Michelle Obama. This book, I actually watched the, the documentary on Netflix two years ago during COVID, and it was something that gave me goosebumps at the time because... As my, my friend here said, when Barack Obama became president, I personally bought a book. They were making these small small because I wanted to understand what drove a black man into becoming the president of the United States of America. America, wow. No, because at the time, I was just 14, but I was really thinking, what pushed this man to become the president? And I felt like I just have to take my time to understand and even learn over the years because it really took a lot. And I was wondering who was this solid woman behind him because if you are going to get somewhere, apart from your family, your partner also counts. And thankfully, years down the line, I've been able to read about Michelle Obama and I have understood and I have admired and I've taken into consideration the kind of things and her mindset most importantly as to pushing her husband to become the president of USA. Nice. Wrapping up, there was something that struck me about Michelle, apart from all the other things my other friends here have mentioned, which is her great sense of duty. She knew she had so many duties and responsibilities to fulfill and to family, most importantly, to herself and to the country. I learned that despite everything, she was able to distribute equally her efforts, her time, hard work into making sure that 
everything was was happening the right way to her girls to her mother to even her friends she made time to um, hang out with them catch up and all of that and even to to the country to serving the country as a first lady she made it a point to leave a mark and she was i realized that she was always her heart was always full when she visited the schools and then the young ladies all um ran up to her and then were very very happy to see her wrapping up lacking in one other way Lacking, we, are, we must be able to distribute or share our energy equally to the things that matter to us, like Michelle did. Lacking in one way or the other will not be of any help. Thus, we must learn to be versatile. So, wrapping up, I'll say that I have learned how to be versatile. I can do a bit of everything. I can do a bit of everything. And this year, I said to myself that I was going to learn some skills. So, I learned how to use Canva. And funny enough, when I got this job as a executive administrator for the mental foundation I am manning, I have to come up with content. So I was asking myself, I'm not a graphic designer. I paid someone once to buy a man, No, I have to be able to learn the skills. So I learned how to use Canva, and now I can use Canva perfectly. And I've even taught like five people, and I, now I make money from it. <laughs> so I want to encourage you that to learn how to be versatile. Don't think you studied nursing, so you you just be with your nursing field. No, learn how to make other things and and move make impacts go for it and be firm thank you thank you very much for the opportunity i am etonam and i think that i've also had the book for quite a while for years and i took my time to watch the documentary the day it arrived i don't know how come i never read the book thank you very much for encouraging me to do so so it was very easy to read because michelle is a very good storyteller and so everything just followed a certain sequence and it was very, very natural. And I think that one of the things about her is how she does not conform. And with everything we've said, it all goes back to her childhood, how she was raised up, how everything just added up one way or the other. And so I think that we shouldn't forget the things that we've learned growing up, the things that we've been taught. Because it's very easy to get to this age and everyone is saying something. It's very easy to get to this age and everyone is saying something and we are taking bits of everything. But then we've been taught something since we're children. Let's not forget all of those things. Let's hold on dearly to the things we've learned. And one thing she said her mom taught her was that growing up isn't finite. So at this age, we can still ask ourselves, what do we want to become when we grow up? And so nobody has really arrived. Even if you're 50 years, you've not arrived. You can still look at becoming something as you grow, because growing up isn't finite. Thank you. Okay, it's a lovely Monday, and much love to all Monday bones here. Ajua here. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay, so my take from becoming. Requirements or expectations of leadership. As we all aspire to be that great person in future, or hold that position, I believe it comes with requirements, with expectations as well. What, what, what is your self worth? What are you um, competent of? Fine, you may get the networks. You may get whatever it takes to get to where you want to. But ask yourself if you are competent. Do you have those skills, those values, those um, um, exceptional qualities that nobody has that you, you think it's, it's, it's fit um, perfectly for you alone. And then continuing um, about meeting um, people's expectations. So when we get there, or when we are into that, um, that leadership position, uh, people expect a lot from us, from family, friends, the society, and then probably our close people or our mentors. But then bear it in mind that you aren't there to please everyone. You can't please everyone. Just do your best and then accept criticisms. Um, I believe criticisms are, um, is a mirror. Or the people in our society represent a mirror for reflection. They, they will tell you what you are doing best or what you are doing wrong. So not all criticisms are bad. We should accept the good ones. 
they are, they are to make us or shape us and then be some, someone better. And then I want to um, know mommy's opinion about um, concealing your private life um, in leadership positions or in the political life or whatever um, position you find out yourself in, how you, you can conceal that private life of yours so that people wouldn't use that as a ground for attacking you or something like that. Because most of the time I realized uh, like the celebrities we know and most of the people who are like who have that figure, popular figure there, one way or the other, if you see that um, much of their private life is out there and then people can just tap into it and then attack them with it. So I want to know how you can conceal your life when you are aspiring to um, go into that leadership position. <laughs> I think that the first thing that you need to do is to decide whether you want to put your private life out there or you simply do not want to. You understand me? The moment you start from that stage, you know how to move on as you go forward. I do not want my family issues and stuff out there. Once in a while, I put my son on my status and say it's his birthday, but at minus that, I don't think that is an everyday thing that I want to do. So it depends on how you want to go about But if you ask me, I think that as you go out there and you are the loudest in the family, you are the politician or the celebrity or whatever it is, just let it be just you and leave the rest out of it. Let them have their private lives as they go to school and all the other, their workplaces and stuff like that. Sometimes it doesn't rub off them well. My son is in the law school. I refuse to write anything law school on my wall because by the time you, are, you become aware, it would have affected him during like his cause or something so i always say that for those of us who are out there let us keep being out there but the rest let's keep them very far away from all the publicity and all the media stuff so that at least they can enjoy their lives out there that's my position on public life thank you very much and from henceforth i'm becoming i'm becoming that great and exceptional woman that phenomenal woman that ever lived because madame obobia has given me this opportunity and i thank loretta and frances for this opportunity to join this family i'm so grateful good morning is that the last one no how many Please be very short. We are out okay. of time. Okay. My first is with resilience. She spoke about resilience developing from the hope that people have in difficult situations. Okay. So here we consider the kids who are trying to find a way, trying to find a way to live through life while they were in a society where there were wild people who are most probably putting in a lot of effort to hinder their progress. There are also two military people. There's one who had a poster on his door, which means that he didn't want people to... Sorry. Which means that he didn't want people to feel pity for him because of what he's going through. He has hope that there's something out there for him and that it's not yet over. Even though he's in the hospital bed, there was this third military person whom, when Michelle Obama was going to see him, was struggling, was struggling really hard, even um, regardless of the, the pain he was feeling, to stand up and then greet the, to stand up and salute the wife of his commander in chief. Secondly, we have the first lady, okay, is according to the story, one who is usually considered as um, a commercial wife, okay, she's just supposed to be there and smile beside her husband. But then here, um, Michelle Obama decided to set a different pace because besides, she was the first black first lady. She needed to do something. She didn't have anybody to lean on to. She had to set the example. And we noticed that with that, she said, I was learning to connect my message to my image. And in this way, I could direct the American gaze because we noticed that people were actually more concerned about her dressing and her posture than what she actually had to say. So she found a way of blending all that. And finally, Michelle Obama said when she was growing that her mom told her, bullies are scared people hiding inside scary people. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, good afternoon once again. 
My name is Mariam Yusuf Said, a student of the University of Ghana. Okay, after reading this book, I was motivated indeed. This book motivated me to carry on with my dreams, regardless of the circumstances I found myself. Also, I'm more ignited than ever. Thank you, <laughs> Mommy Obubia, for this great initiative. Okay, good afternoon. My name is Maria Ma Ibrahim. Okay, I'm going to be very brief. So, after reading this book, it just fell on me that everything is possible. Whatever you want to do in life is possible. From your career, the way you want your life to go, where you want to go, everything is possible. But life happens. So, as you go through life, you have to learn. At every stage, you learn from people, you teach people as well, and also add value to yourself as you add value to other people's lives. Thank you. Thank you. That's last. Okay, um, Jim Lennon and Equa, um, Becoming by Michelle Obama. I learned three things. Um, the first thing I learned was, um, as humans, we always need to learn new things. Growing up, we really need to learn new things. And then the second thing I learned was um, choosing a partner in life is very important. Um, the, second, the third part was um, anything you are doing in life, you need to work harder. You need to strive. You need to pull through. You need to try as much as possible to, to work harder towards it. And everything is going to be fine. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. I mean, I'm already full. I came here this morning, I was hungry, but uh, the discussions have made me satisfied. So uh, I'm going to introduce a very coming. interesting young... I'll come okay, in, Khadija. Please. I'd like to introduce my friends who have just joined us. Mr. Odun Odunfa is Managing Director for the First Atlantic Bank, and he has joined us today. He'll give us a word very soon, and I'm sure that for those of you who were at our first um, Ignite um, event at the law school auditorium at the University of Ghana, Lagon, Mrs. Joyce Bawamotari, she's special aide to former President Rollins. She was a speaker, and I'm sure that you all enjoyed her session. She's joined us on our end of year session today. First of all, we would like to listen to Mr. Odun Odunfa because he doesn't have too much time. He will leave soon. And then when he's done, uh, Joyce will give us. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Can I stand? Yes. Okay. Nice to meet you. Um, Obi says I should uh, come share a few thoughts with you. And I'm going to tell you two stories um, that I think would help you as young women who are trying to make an impact in, in this society and the world. There's an interesting woman in the Bible called Esther. You know the story of Esther? I'm not a pastor, I'm not preaching. I'm just sharing a story with you. A phenomenal woman. She was born into poverty. She was born into an afflicted tribe. She was a Jew in a time that it was not fashionable to be a Jew. She lost her parents very young. She was an orphan, both. And she had to go live with her uncle. And then they were deported. Right? So they had to go live in a foreign country. So, I mean, I don't know, whatever hardship you, you can think you, you, you've had or you're going through, I mean, could it be worse than that? Really? And she then went into King Ahasuerus' kingdom and more or less served like a, a help or a slave to a slave because her uncle Mordecai was a palace hand and she worked in his house so she was a help to a help do you get it 
but she never lost hope. She always took her lessons carefully. She preserved herself and she prepared herself. And when it was time that um, Queen Vashti did what she did, she became disrespectful to the king, who at the time ruled more than 60% of the world. Go and read about King Xerxes or King Ahasuerus, as they call him in the Bible, or the guy who was featured in the, in the film called 300. Have you watched the film 300? That's King Xerxes. And he had to send off his wife. And then he launched a competition in the whole kingdom to become, to look for the next queen. She listened to Mordecai, she prepared herself. And she prayed so that she can have access. By far not the most beautiful in the kingdom. By far not the most privileged, not the most illustrious. In fact, she had to hide the fact that she was Jew. Mordecai said, look, you will lie. Do not reveal yourself as being a Jew because you will not be qualified. And she took the instruction. So when people tell you this, uh, you mustn't lie. Well, bullshit, I'm sorry. Yes. There are times to lie. I'm, I'm sorry to be so categorical. It might seem like I'm promoting bad behavior, but that's not what I'm saying. And she used all the right perfumes, took all the right births, did everything. And then she said, you know, I will go. And she went and she won. She became queen. And that story hasn't ended, right? And then the persecution became worse for the Jews, her people. And Mordecai said, perhaps this, for such a time where you've put in this position. And she said, you know what, I'll do it. I'll make the sacrifice. But on the condition that you all join me to fast and to pray. And then, you know, the story of the final decades of her life became very glorious and she, she saved her people, right? So becoming is good. The Obamas haven't saved anybody yet. It's a fantastic story, but can, it, can a woman be more phenomenal, more impactful than Esther? from where she was coming from to where she got and all the ingredients are there don't let anybody tell you that your beginning will define your end one don't let them tell you that you don't have to put the put in the work two don't let them tell you that you don't need guidance which you're getting three don't let them convince you that you mustn't wait And finally, you must pray. You must pray. Because even, the, even Jesus said for things like this, we have to fast and pray. Not all things can I just command to come into being. I'll tell you a little story about myself. That's the second story. She introduced me as MD of First Atlantic Bank. I'm 52 years old this December. I graduated just before my 21st birthday. I started banking at 21. This is my 32nd year. It's all I've done. Good times, bad times. Um, my friends that we graduated with, maybe 12 guys, you know, so-called happening boys at the time, half of them went to the UK and the US, and uh, the other, maybe five or six people started businesses buying selling importing exporting joined family businesses and all that i'm the only one that took up a job and i've been at it for 31 almost 32 years if anybody tells you that it's overnight that it's not true even the politician has to go through election cycles if you think that you're not going to pay the price when we used to go out i couldn't pay for drinks you know those days now thank god i can pay for all of them put together it's taken th almost 32 years do not think that you will not put in the effort if 
you jump from one thing to the other, you will be a rolling stone. You will gather no moss. And your life will be determined ultimately by two things. And grace and mercy, which we know, and the people you surround yourself with, which the lady said. And that's why I'm here with Obi. She's my sister, has been a supporter for a long time. And, you know, uh, that whole story about the woman is behind. My wife is in front. Because if she says, oh, don't, don't go out tonight, I'm not going. So find your own support group and put in the time. Put in the time. If anybody tells you they made it overnight, they're lying. And indeed, if they do, they will burn out very quickly. Nothing replaces your labor and your toil. Your impact is determined first by that and what everybody else will add to you. Even David was in the wilderness toiling before he was called to be king. And even when he was king, he was in the wilderness for another 17 years fighting battles. Surrounded by his three and 33. That's what the Bible calls them. His mighty men. I thank you for your time. God bless you. Thank you very much, Mr. Odun Odunfa. Madam. Yes, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were asking me to come here and just... Uh, oh. It's the end of year. We need to hear something nice from you. Since uh, uh, Mr. Odum stood, oh, no, it's okay. I think I'll just uh, stay with the uh, existing protocols. Merry Christmas, all of you, and uh, pleasure once more to meet and engage everybody. My mother will not be very happy with me today because usually on the 26th, we all have lunch together at my younger sister's place. So I'm actually just wrapping up to go there. But when Obi called me, I thought, okay, why not? always fantastic to meet young women and just have a short engagement and inspire you to keep at it. It's not every day that you'd find yourselves lucky enough to find a woman who wants to sacrifice and dedicate her time to, you know, try and help groom you or shape your future. You don't know what doors will open for you when you leave here or when you walk into the space. I think that Ignite is a fantastic, fantastic opportunity. You know, sometimes we underestimate the value of our small clubs. You know, I belong to the Youth Rotary Club. It served many, many purposes for me. I think it actually even honed my skills at public speaking. It was a great platform for me as a young lawyer to engage on the Rotary front, speak at various engagements. It gave me my very first human rights case. So yes, sometimes you walk into a club like this and uh, many doors will open for you. I don't know how far you started with your reading clubs and all that. You know, please, let me just tell you. It's BS. Let's forget about first ladies. Why don't we want to become president or vice president and tell our own stories? It's inspiring enough to hear about first ladies. But yesterday, I watched the uh, vice president of America's husband, a man in the role of a second gentleman. It was so heartwarming. It was such a profound interview. And I love the fact that even as he's a gentleman, he was asked, all the 12 former first ladies have gone on to, second ladies have gone on to become first ladies. Do you want to one day become first gentleman of the land? Nothing beats that. So I think the woman has come of age, where you can also have the first or second gentleman. So I think that, yes, it's of course a very inspirational story. And like uh, he said, the Obamas have yet to change anybody's life. But they provide enormous inspiration and motivate all of us. That there's so much more out there that we can do. So yes, after Obama's being black and all of the history with them, we now have a Jewish second gentleman of the land. So that is also a very unique opportunity. So it tells you that the world has come of age. And I believe that the story of Esther in the Bible has always inspired many, many women. And so I think that you've heard it all. I'm sure there's one thing about the Obama book that actually stayed with me, where she said that you should reach out and get what you want. So when there was a trip, for example, to France and she wasn't included, she didn't want to ask her parents because she thought that they had made quite a sacrifice. But her parents asked her, why are you not telling us about the trip? And when she finally did, the next thing she knew, she was on the flight to where? To France. It was her first trip out of America. So sometimes you can reach out for the stars even, and you don't know what else will happen. The next thing I loved about that book was her choice of going to Princeton. 
her own counselor who had been working with her told her that you are not qualified, you're not the type of person. Because at Princeton people drive, they go with big cars, they're from big families, they're from influential families. So who goes to Princeton when nobody knows you? You know, I remember when I had to go to Wesley Girls and do my sixth form. It never even crossed my mind that it was such a great school, that it was fantastic, or that there was anything special about it. My big brother had been in Achimota, my cousins had been in Agri Girls, I had many friends who had been in and out of Wesley Girls and Roses and all of that. I didn't think it was special. But of course, coming from England, my parents felt that it would be the best opportunity for you to go to a girl's ed, where you'd at least be able to settle in and focus on your studies, and a place where people don't look at you too much and focus too much about where you are coming from. So I think sometimes great opportunities come to your way when you don't even expect it. I was never even a competitive student until I sat in class with just girls. So I believe that there is something in when we are allowed even to compete against each other. Maybe that's why I don't stereotype too much. You know, any woman can be my friend. I can work with any woman. But still, I work in a very male-dominated environment. And it also builds character. So please, I think this is a fantastic opportunity. A great door has opened for you. Don't look back. Never look back. And never think that anything is impossible. But of course, please don't take it for granted either. I think it is a challenge in keeping things and remembering not to take it for granted. I think a book about the first lady that inspired me the most is by Jehan Sadat, who was the first lady of Egypt many years ago in the 1970s, even before I was born. It's a profound story of a woman from a middle class family who married a military ruler and how she changed the trajectory, the story of the women in Egypt. Fought for women's rights, taught them how to sew, how to build, how to manufacture, name it. That story has led me to many places. It's a very old book, but it's profound. And I think it's a book that every young woman must read. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Joyce Bawa Mokhtari. Edda Magbana is a national coordinator. He will say a word or two and introduce our next book, and then we'll be wrapping up. All right, thank you so much, um, Obi. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm very happy to join you again this afternoon for our monthly book review exercise. I have observed that Becoming was the most interesting book that you've read so far because the contributions on the platform every day at 7 p.m., and the keen interest all of you had in the book um, vindicates our mentor for choosing that book for you at this time because it's a very appropriate book for you. And so I would want us to appreciate her for deciding that we read Becoming and listening to all of you, the lessons that you pick from the book, um, very important. My take on the book, Becoming, is that even the whole idea of the book is fascinating. To have a former first lady, like Honorable Joyce Bauer said, she's not the first first lady in, in history to write a book. But Michelle came at a time that social media uh, made her one character that almost every young woman wanted to listen to. And so the book gave us the opportunity to understand that as unique, as inspiring, as great as she is, she also had her own personal challenges, the same challenges that you and I may have at any phase in our life. And so, um, like one of you said, that she's just an ordinary person with an extraordinary journey. And so it's important to pick key lessons from from her and how she became a very influential woman across the world so the book becoming it's a great book after this i will encourage those who could not read all the chapters to use the holiday period to read those chapters our next book with the approval of our mentor is a, a book that we find very difficult to mention the title. <laughs> 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 
So don't worry, we have enough copies for everyone. So I'm sure you can all read <laughs> what the title is because. What's the title? <laughs> okay, so I've been given the word to me. So the title of the book is The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. <laughs> the Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. It's a very, very, very good read. And it's a book that has been recommended by many great people who have already read it and they recommend it for us. And we started with discovering our purpose-driven life, which gave you the opportunity to discover yourself and your purpose within 40 days. After that, we moved to 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. So you learned the tenets of leadership. Then we move to the very difficult 48 laws of power, which challenged most of you. Many of you had challenge understanding what the whole book was about. Because, but it gave us the practical ideas of how to live, how to um, even befriend people, how not to trust everyone. And I believe that even when you read Becoming, some of the stories around Michelle and her friends it's just a softer version of the lessons that we pick from the 48 laws of power. So it makes more sense as we read even other books. Now we are moving to The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck by Mark Manson. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> so The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Toss. <laughs> we have been asked to replace. So that's it. So please, this book has nine chapters. On the average, each chapter has about 23, pa 23 pages. We will start reading from the 3rd of January. Because we are in the holiday season, we want to allow you some time to rest, reflect, make your New Year resolutions. But 3rd January, we are starting this book for nine days. So each day you are expected to read 23 pages from this book. And so that is our next book. From 3rd January, uh, we'll start the discussions again, 7 p.m. each day on our platform. Thank you so much. Okay, we are done. So thank you to all of you. Thank you to our special guest, Mrs. Choice, Baba Mokhtari, Odun, Odunfa, all of you are friends of Ignite. We don't take it for granted. Our next meeting is in January. We are having one of our big um, gatherings in January too. The information will go out with the venue and then we start planning towards it. I promise that we are bringing some very interesting speakers. I know you will enjoy yourself and that's not just it. Please be reminded that as you have taken this book, make sure that you contribute to the discussions on the WhatsApp page every evening so that at the end of the day, we can come back in gen end of January to have our book review at the same venue. Don't forget that. And then after, we also want to remind you of our social media handles. You guys are still not active there. I'm still pleading that let's make it a point to check if there's a post and then we can contribute, share, and comment on it. So once again, thank you all for spending your morning with us. Lunch is served. I wish all of you a Merry Christmas. And always remember that I love you very much. Thank you. Let's have a group picture so that the big...